Okay, folks, I've been wanting to talk about these all week. Uh, these will, if you're watching on YouTube, these will be two separate videos. If you're listening to this, I will try to walk you through the Vanderpump Rules midseason trailer and also the Valley trailer, the Jax Taylor spinoff that we were all asking for. Uh, but I think there's a lot of stuff that uh, we can talk about in terms of these two trailers about where we're headed in Vanderpump Rules and where the F we're going to go uh, with. The Valley, which is premiering next week directly after Vanderpump Rules. Jax is back. Oh, is he back, you guys? So the Vanderpump Rules midseason trailer, I was very excited to see a midseason trailer, which means we potentially are going to get a 14-episode season. They are filming the reunion this weekend. Uh, also, if you listen to the podcast on the Vanderpump Rules uh, recap, I was very curious if Ariana would be there since she was doing shows uh, on Broadway with Chicago. They are dark on Friday and Saturday, so Ariana will be there filming for the reunion, which is great because I was going to be so bummed if she was zooming in. I just hate zoomed in reunions, and I thought that it would just even give more flack for people to like bash Ariana with. So, uh, what a by the way, first, I wish the midseason trailer was literally just Billy Lee and Joe. I just want Bill. I want you like. I want more Billy Lee and Joe now. Like those. Everything else is so dark, but they add a certain levity for me, the viewer. That I'm like, hell yeah, let's just let's throw Billy Lee and Joe in every possible scene that we can because it's it's like wave, waving something bright and shiny in my face. Okay, so we start off Still the mid season come trailer. On this season. Uh, I'm trying to pump rules. It's not Lisa, of course, you know, the narrator, still come on, uh, Vanderpump rules. And we open up and we see a Tom Schwartz shot in a restaurant. Lala's next to him. And the thing that we notice about Tom Schwartz is that he went full Kate Gosselin. He has now had a bleach blonde uh, effect to his hair. I think he looks like a really beautiful soccer mom with this hair. And you know, you know, Joe did this to him. Joe, the hairstylist, which by the way, has anybody noticed Joe's hair herself? Like it's not, it's, 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 uh, it's interesting, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she just likes to give people hairdos, but yeah, here we go. A trash person. He's a good person who did a trash thing. A trash thing? A lot of things. Okay, so immediately we see that Schwartz is directly across from Ariana. Not only that, her new boyfriend, Dan. And once again, Schwartz being the spokesman for Tom Sandoval, he's like, oh, he's, you know, not a trash person. He just did a trash thing, you know, like, oh, I love that guy. And Ariana's like, a trash thing? Like, literally, oh, you know, like already off the bat. But that got me excited to see Ariana in a conversation with Schwartz. And I just find it funny that Schwartz would staunchly defend Sandoval in front of Ariana, which is great. Uh, your footsteps. Then we cut to uh, a scene in the Tom and Ariana house, a.k.a. the dungeon. And we see Ariana on FaceTime, probably with her boyfriend, Dan, and going, I hear Tom Sandoval. Oh, and we see Tom Sandoval dipping out quietly you know, with his like diet, diet slice in his hand. That's how awkward this living scenario really, truly must be. Uh, I wish we saw more producer Anne in this or not producer assistant Anne, assistant Anne of like, Tom, you can come down the steps now. So we see him go out the door and then all of a sudden DJ James Kennedy pops up out of a bathtub with bubbles. He's like, bubble, it's bubble night. DJ James Kennedy doesn't really have much of a storyline, like a solo storyline. His storyline is just being hurt by his big brother, Tom Sandoval. So he pops out of the bathtub. Then we see uh, a scene reminiscent of Reservoir Dogs with four of the women, Lala, Katie, Ariana, and Sheena walking down a street, all in different looks. I mean, they truly look like the Avengers of West Hollywood here. Um, <laughs> so then... Uh, we see a bunch of clips. One is Sheena filming a music video with her band. I think it's they're called the 27s. Uh, so we see that. We see Tom with these horrible glasses. What are these, Oakleys? It's like, it reminds me of the glasses the baseball players at my high school used to wear that picked on me. And he see, looks like he's driving a, a sports car with his like wife beater on. And he's got this Marky Mark face on. Like, let's go, brother. Yeah. Uh, then. Oh, we see they're at some kind of, 
I don't know, some kind of club. Lala has like this shimmery uh, silver bra on, and it, it, it's, it's what, 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 what's the fucking name? What, the, the, the thing, the burlesque. It's like a burlesque show. And the girls are at this burlesque show. We see Ali Dali in the background. And, the, you know, we also see a murder mystery party in the mid season trailer. And sometimes I just don't know if I need uh, the 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 pomp and circumstance like i don't need him to go out to some burlesque show just talk just talk at ali dally's living room that's all i want so are you gonna ask me on a date okay so we schwartz we see schwartz kiss somebody and then in the next scene it is uh it's sheena and brock's nanny that didn't really work out for them and She's like, are you going to ask me out on a date? And then we see Schwartz in another scene kissing her, kissing her. And this looks like potentially this looks like on Melrose right by pump and they're kissing. And but she just looks so young, though. Thank you. Um, closer than ever right now. I mean, we're dating the same girls. That's and then you guys, we finally get the storyline. Schwartz telling Joe of like. You know, um, I think me and Katie are like dating the same girl. And we see Katie Maloney with that big dick energy kissing the same girl, kissing Sheena's ex nanny. And then Joe, we see he's saying this to Joe at the hair salon and uh, Schwartz has like the little saran wrap on his head or whatever it is to hold in those gorgeous blonde locks. And Joe is like, oh, that's fucking weird. Ooh. And when Joe says something like it's fucking weird, that's really got to be fucking weird, you know? Weird. Tom's going to wake up and realize that I was the one that got away. I know we're divorced, but like I was thinking just like maybe one night stand. I would consider keeping the house. Oh my God. And then the most uncomfortable scene. Uh, Katie says, I think Tom is going to realize that I'm the one that got away. What do you guys think about that? Do you think, I think in certain ways he will always kind of hold that flame, obviously. And when he's at his darkest moments, he will have thoughts like that. But at the same time, I think Schwartz, who will never potentially admit this on camera is, uh, is kind of enjoying certain aspects of his life. But then we see the scene where he was like, I was thinking Katie. Just like one night, just like no strings attached, like doing the hippity dippity, like really bumping uglies together one last time. And you can see Katie's face of like, ah, I mean, that's the weird thing, right? When you're in this long term relationship and all of a sudden you don't see them anymore. But then Schwartz, all, all of a sudden he needs some sexual healing from Miss Katie Maloney. And you, I, okay, here, let's, let's take bets on this. Do we think Katie will, uh, will, <laughs> And also, what do you do? You think Schwartz is a generous lover? Do you think Schwartz is like laying it down the bed? Like, what if he's kind of like lazy and like, oh, ah, uh, shucks, in his real life? But when he hits the bedroom, he's like, flip over here, yeah, we're gonna do it in this position now. Like, what if he's like just a stallion in the bedroom? I don't think he is, but like potentially, wouldn't that kind of be amazing? I think there's no way in hell that Katie takes that opportunity. But you never know, right? And then we go to another scene back in Tom and Ariana's house. And Sandoval, he has his fixed penis flute that he loves dearly. He loves his penis flute more than Ariana. And he's holding it in his hands, you know, how you would fiddling with a penis flute. And he was like, I would um consider keeping the house if I had a roommate. And he see, we see that he's talking to Tom Schwartz. This is what I was wanting all along is that get Schwartz to move into this dungeon with you. But I just like Sandoval kicking back, looking at this penis flute. Like, um, I was comp I was contemplating in my journal if I would like to live with anybody else. And there's only one person that supposedly would fit that bill. You, Tom Schwartz. And uh, if I had a roommate, I do you want to play a little? We see Tom Schwartz eating fruit next to Maya the dog. And Maya the dog, you can tell, is like, oh, dude, it's already fucking crowded here. I can't. Like, I mean, I can't. We, can I make sure I'm not here if Schwartz moves in? And Schwartz is kind of just shaking his head, which I think we're all shaking our heads. But we said, like, the biggest mess usually wins on reality television. Like, there is something intriguing about watching these two goofballs live together. Like, I know Tom has two assistants, but potentially, like, the, the you know, like, the electricity bill would still not be paid. And Schwartz, oh, that was me. I'm sorry. My bad. 
Then we go okay. to a scene with the I girls. I have sperm up here. I don't know. It looked like Slala potentially was throwing some sort of, uh, I don't know, donor party or something. And Lala's like, so I've got sperm up here. And Lisa leaning into Ariana. Did she say she had sperm up there? Very interesting to see Lisa in a scene with Ariana after Lisa has been the Iago to like Othello in so many of these episodes, trying to subtly put feelers out that Ariana is a horrible person. She sucks. Ah. Have you ever had a threesome? <laughs> Daniel. Okay, and then we get back to that first scene where Schwartz is across from Daniel, Dan, Ariana's boyfriend, and Ariana, and Schwartz is like, have you ever had a threesome? Which I... <laughs> Could you... Tom Schwartz, man, clocking in this season, asking the tough questions. And then uh, then we see a, a cut to a scene where Daniel's coming out of the shower, and it turns out this guy has long, luscious locks. This guy, it's it's like it, it's like that old band, nobody's gonna even get this reference. It's like that old band Nelson, you know, the two brothers in the uh, late eighties that had like a rock band and they had this long flowing locks. But like Daniel comes out of the shower and he whips his hair back, and Lala's in a bathrobe going like, "Daniel is hot because this guy's ripped. He's a personal trainer, totally. I guess he, w ladies, do you think he's like the cat's meow? Do you would you? Would you do the hippity dippity with Daniel? That's why I'm gonna ask. Ariana's got good taste in men. Okay, and then we cut to Sandoval going, Yeah, dude, Ariana has good taste in men. <laughs> I love Tom Sandoval appreciating the beauty of someone's choices in terms of sexual preference, what turns them. Yeah, dude, have you seen the, the guy that Ariana's been with? Um, Daniel, amazing. Uh, me. Also amazing. We're cut from the same cloth, dude. And then we see Ariana kiss Daniel in another scene. Like, so Daniel, the back half of the season seems like there's a lot of Daniel. Potentially all of these scenes got filmed in like one fail swoop. So who knows? But I'm here to see their relationship on camera. I want to see, you know, that's the other thing too, is that usually the audience can sniff something out before the characters in the scenes themselves. So we'll be able to tell really quickly how we feel about this man. And I feel bad for this dude, potentially not wanting to be on TV, then winding up on TV. And that can be a really tough road. We see Joe, we see Billy, G, uh, Billy Lee going through similar things. I mean, the spotlight will be on him. It's just sometimes that spotlight can be really bad. If Ariana's ex were to come up and be like, hey dude, I'm Sandoval, what would you do? So then you guys, Lala is talking to Daniel and said, if Ariana's ex would come up to you and like introduce yourself, what would you do? And then we literally cut to a scene of Tom Sandoval, like kneeling over, coming in to shake Daniel's hand. And it looks like Ariana is right next to him when he does that. And by the way, that's like patented Sandoval playbook, right? Like, what's up, dude? Hey, dude. Hey, really? Yeah, really hot stuff, dude. You're really very, uh, very good looking, dude. I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, I'm Sandoval. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of me. <laughs> I've been on a couple seasons of this show. Uh, some people will say I've started this show. I don't know. Anyways, really great to meet you, dude. But anyways, Daniel then says, listen, I know what's gone on before. I know who he is. I know what he's done. We're all friends again. Oh, are we? I definitely. And then we see a quick scene of Schwartz around Ariana and Schwartz going, we're all friends again. And Ariana's like, are we? Listen, I'm all for the ice thawing in terms of Schwartz and Ariana. If Schwartz can actually start to realize what he participated in along with Sandoval. I'm down for that. Leave the like babies in our future. I've never felt that. How is okay, so maybe this is a storyline for DJ James Kennedy, obviously based off of the La La storyline. But DJ James City's like, I've always seen babies in our future, baby night. And Allie's like, um, I've uh, never actually seen that. And you could tell, like, we're potentially going to get a crying scene from DJ James Kennedy. Like, oh, babies, please, Lisa, please don't. Don't, Lisa. Allie, please. Uh, but 
Ali, man, the voice of reason on this show. That's why I keep saying, like, I want to know cameras down how that relationship works because she seems like she's got her head on her shoulders and she can predict the future because of those birth charts. Like, she's got all the answers already. All of the answers Ali Dally has. How are we going to keep believing these men's genuine tears? You've been relentlessly <sighs> talking so about me. The whole world is talking about you. Okay, okay. So we see this montage of Sandoval crying, and that looks like just this season. If we actually were to uh, pull back out and see like 11 seasons of Sandoval crying, that would take the entire hour. But we see this, and Katie's like, how many... How many times are we going to believe this man's tears? And then uh, then we see, we cut to Sandoval talking to somebody and he's saying like, um, you know, you have been relentlessly talking about me, dude. And it, we see that he's talking to, dun, 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 Jax Taylor. Jax Taylor with his new, like he's had this like, like beard goatee or like mustache goatee look for a bit. He looks like, when in old eighties, um, like I'm thinking about Knight Rider, they would do like the evil twin and the evil twin. The only difference would be they had like a mustache and a little tiny, uh, uh, chin pube beard. Like that's how you would determine that somebody was an evil twin. Jax looks like he's the evil twin of Jax, if that makes sense. But anyways, Jax fires back at Sandoval. The whole world's been, been talking shit about you, dude. Like he's like, I got to sell a show, man. You, the whole entire world. The whole entire world. We cut over to Sheena. I don't think you and I are going to be together forever. <coughs> okay, I don't know what that... Sheena talking to, to Brock, and Sheena's like, I don't see us together for the rest of our lives. And we see Brock, which looks like he's wiping away. Like, ah, oh, Daniel, tell me that. Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, we got summer. Come on. What the hell? That's the, I, I don't know if this is Frankenstein editing where they're putting a tear in after they've made up or something. But for Sheena to declare that, it is one of those things. Even if I've like, I've, I, I've talked to Sheena off you know, like uh, in person and all this stuff. And like, you don't know sometimes, I think this is the paranoia that creeps in even with me, is that some of these people, even though they're loud mouths, they keep stuff close to the vest. Like there's a part of me that's like, oh, shit, maybe they did split up and they're just like playing nice. I do not know what to believe anywhere with anyone, especially on this cast anymore. We cut to uh, a, a scene where they look like they're all dressed as gangsters. I don't know if this is Brock or not. It just looks like a big beefy guy in a bowler hat, but they're he's choking, you know, like Kathy Hilton came in and gave him a curse or something. He's like, ah! <coughs> so I don't know if that's Brock or not. <laughs> oh no, you guys, it's the murder mystery party. So usually at these dumb murder mystery parties that we've seen way too much of on Bravo, somebody dies and then you have to put the mystery together. So that's that. And then we cut to Tom Sandoval playing with some kind of sparklers. Oh, dude, fireworks, dude. I picked these up in Bakersfield, dude. Let's light them up, dude. <laughs> Sheena crying. Oh, oh, no. oh. And then we see them in the water in San Francisco because, by the way, the finale takes place in San Francisco at a launch of something Kyle Chan is doing. That's where I think the season finale initially was supposed to be the opening of something about her. That doesn't look like it's happening. So this they're in San Francisco and it looks like they take a boat ride from hell. Then we cut to a beach where Ariana's there, but Sandoval's there as well. And DJ James Kennedy is drawing that line in the sand. Like this is Sandoval's side. And this is Ariana's side. According to your rules, Ariana, don't my speak to me. Don't house, speak to me. So Sandoval's trying to initiate a conversation with Ariana and he's like, oh, dude, by your rules, my friend found the house. And Ariana's like literally on the other side going, don't speak to me. Don't speak to me. I can't hear you. Da, 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 da. Is that the wind? I can't hear you. You're speaking to me. So you're a liar. Let him go. She just came over to. Okay, so this looks like it's at the final scene or the final episode in San Francisco because they're all dressed up and Schwartz has those luscious blonde locks. And, you know, Katie once again is like, Joe, you're a fucking creep. And Joe's like, let him go already. Let him go. And Schwartz obviously trying to defend anybody that's not Katie. I make peace. I don't want peace. I feel like I just got extracted into like a parallel universe. Ariana, wait one second. 
Okay, so we hear Schwartz saying, I feel like I got extracted into a parallel universe. And the camera does some kind of weird swirly thing. We cut to that last episode in San Francisco where Tom is dressed in a black tux, everybody's black tie. And he's like, Ariana, dude, Ariana, talk to me. And Ariana turns and walks away rapidly. So obviously this is what I had predicted. Like, you know, they were going to try to put her in scenes where they would... I don't know if force is the right word, but try to make something happen between these two. Some kind of conversation we have on camera. Sheena's on the other side of Sandoval. Ariana, though, immediately walks away. Plus 30 seconds with the audience. She doesn't give a if I died in a ditch. Ariana, she f***ing talks about all you Okay, so then we see the aftermath of that. Uh, Ariana talking to producer Jeremiah, who's been there for a long time on Vanderpump Rules. And like, you know, he doesn't care if I die in a ditch. And then we see Tom Sandoval talking to the gang, including producer Jeremiah going, she's talked shit about all you guys, dude. That is such a desperate pussy move when like, and by the way, Sandoval, if you really want to get into that game about you talking shit about your gang of friends, there's plenty of things that I think a lot of people could say about the things that you've said off camera, off mic about these people. But that's like just a desperate man's like desperate final attempt. Just watching this trailer of like, what a stupid thing to throw out there. But also it's the right cast in which to do it because then Sheena takes everything literally and is like, oh my God, she has, she has like Sheena's paranoid about everything this season. I now have up thoughts about Brock and Lala, one of my best friends, because I'm like, oh my God, can someone do that to me? You did that. Okay, so maybe this is where some of the Brock issue potentially lies because this next scene at a different location, Sheena's like, I have paranoid thoughts now about Brock with Lala and you're the, you're, you're the reason I have those. And Sandoval actually is like, oh shit, dude. I've, I've done that. I've, I've created this. Oh man. So what do I mean to you? I mean a lot. Because we're filming her because of life. Okay, so this final thing, what I had heard was that Ariana does leave that night at that final episode, and Sheena's the one that does the final scene with Tom. And in a sense, from a producer angle, you think that actually is, it kind of works because the last episode of last season, the Scandal episode, we had that final scene with Sheena and Tom was, you know, I, I don't think I can be your friend anymore scene. So that nicely sandwiches in a way. But Sheena's like, you know, what do I mean to you? And uh, he's like, you you mean a lot, dude. You, like, Sheena, you mean a lot. And Sheena's like, uh, as like, you know, kind of in real life or as uh, just because we're filming. And Tom looks, <laughs> Tom looks befuddled because I think everything is one and the same for Tom. He's like, what are you talking about, dude? And then it's just Vanderpump rules, the, gra the the glass crashes, all of that. So that is what is yet to come. Uh, I mean, it had a lot. You, you got a lot of things in that. And I think it's great because we su do see Ariana interacting a little bit more. So I'm really curious. You got some Katie Maloney things in there as well. Uh, they've been kind of off to the sideline doing their own thing. I will say not a mention of something about her at all. Uh, I'm curious when we get the update at the reunion this weekend, where they're at with that. Uh, there has been so much speculation about the store. Um, they have taken down all the decorative things. Uh, you know, I do know for a fact the city of West Hollywood code compliance was off, but I do think if you wait enough time, you're pouring money into rent and stuff. I would be curious if at a certain point they don't cut ties with that because it's just a money suck at a certain point, but who knows? Who knows? That was the trailer. Let us know what you think. Drop it in the comments. And uh, I, I hope you enjoy that. That kind of got me excited. I feel really dead inside watching Vanderpump Rules this season, but that did get me excited. I uh, We got seven more weeks and then we'll probably, what, we'll get like a three-part reunion out of this. Even if it's only meant for two, we'll, they'll probably find a way to make it three. Okay.